Okay, so we have another theorem. This time we have this one, the non-zero rows, R1, R2, Rn, of a matrix in echelon form are linearly independent. So let us say we have some, not some kind of matrix, say a three by three, okay. To say this one is zero, zero. So this one is in echelon form, right? Okay, so this row is a non-zero one, the second row is a non-zero one, and the third one too. Okay, it's in echelon form, so the rows are linearly independent. Okay, so we are going to prove this, and for that we are going to use um, contradiction. Okay, so let us suppose we have this set of non-zero rows, so this will be the, the vectors in the rows, um, R1, R2, R, N minus 1, R, N vectors, okay, uh, the rows. And we are going to suppose that they are dependent. So if they are dependent, um, then one of the rows, let us say Rm, will be a linear combination of the preceding rows. Okay, so let us say that Rm is a linear combination of Rm plus 1, Rm plus 2, etc. Okay? We assume that they were dependent. Okay. Now we assume that one of the components, the Keith component, okay, will be the first non zero entry. Now, since the matrix is in the echelon form, these K components of R, M plus 1, etc., will be all zero. Okay, and so this uh, component will be in, in this form. So we assumed this one is dependent, right? One of the rows, R, M, will be a linear combination of the preceding rows. Our M will be the linear combination of all this, right? Now, the kth component of R M is the first non-zero entry, right? And since the matrix is in echelon form, the kth components of R M will be all zero, okay? So it will be written in this way. So all this will be a m plus one zero, zero, and then we would get a zero, okay? But this contradicts the assumption that this one um, is not zero, okay? So the case component, we said it's not zero. Right, and so R one, R two, R N, they have to be independent. And this concludes the proof.